Hello biologists, today we are looking at uh, specification point H from biodiversity for a level biology OCR. This is taken from 4.2.1 for biodiversity. So in specification point H we're looking at in situ and ex situ methods of maintaining biodiversity. And there are a couple of examples of each here that we need to know and we need to look at. We also need to know advantages and disadvantages of using ex situ and in situ conservation. Okay, so in situ, this is where you protect animals and plants in their natural habitat. And um, for example, here we have, for example, uh, national parks in Kenya, where this is their natural habitat. You're protecting them in their natural habitat. For example, in this one, the lions. And here is another example where you're protecting turtle eggs, again, in their natural habitat. So you can do this by things like hunting bands or, for example, fines um, uh, and helping helping to provide uh, people to patrol the area to catch people that might be trying to hunt the animals there. So that's in situ, protecting the animals in their natural habitat. Ex situ is where you protect animals and plants away from their natural habitat. So the first thing that comes to mind here is, for example, the zoo. The zoo is where animals are protected away from their natural habitat. This is in a red box, it's taken directly from the MART scheme. There are two other things here that I'm um, that are also ex situ. One of them is botanical garden. So this is where you would take plants from different parts of the world and you just you put them into a garden. Now these are normally grown and normally protected by governments or local authorities. Um, so yeah, it's quite a nice way to look at these different plants that you wouldn't maybe normally see. Another thing is the seed banks. Now, I highly advise you watch some other YouTube videos and YouTube clips here on seed banks and what they are and where you find them. But there's a really good one here in the in the Antarctic, and um, it basically stores all the seeds from all around the world, all the different varieties of seeds that you have. And um, you do this for various different reasons. So seed banks, it's better to store them as seeds rather than adult plants because seeds can produce in excess. They can be collected without damage to the actual plant. They take up very little space. They can store a large number within a small area. It's cheaper to transport. They're viable for a long period of time. This means that you can, for example, store a seed for a long time and then uh, grow it put sow it and put it in the ground it'll it will survive for a lot longer it's also a lot less susceptible to disease and this key point here at the very end here is store a great genetic bi biodiversity or diversity for example you can have several different strains of rice for example that are grown in different areas around the world and these are quite good because for example if you have a forest fire what happened in australia fairly recently you can send over some seeds from the seed banks to um for them to allow them to regrow that particular area of the plants that used to grow there that have been burnt away so seed banks are really good ex situ conservation in situ conservation um we've got advantages and disadvantages so in situ conservation, uh, they're more likely to survive in the wild because you've got little human contact, can protect the whole population, for example, the whole population of rhinos or the whole population of um, elephants. Whereas if it was in a zoo, you can only protect, for example, I don't know, 10 elephants, for example, not the whole population. Um, disadvantages for in situ so this is in their natural habitat it can be difficult to enforce bans on hun hunters and poachers um because they can actually slip through the net and they can still um unfortunately poach some of the animals you can't protect from predation and also there's no protection from climate change so if you want to pause this and have a go at ex situ advantages and disadvantages because they are fairly similar but obviously opposite if you want to pause that have a go now because here are the answers so for ex situ conservation I'm not going to read through all of these, uh, but it is worth pausing it and having a read through. Um, these are in a red box because they're taken directly from the mark scheme. Um, so there you are. Just one thing here, uh, mating through artificial selection uh, and selection. This is quite handy for, for zoos. So for example, um, you can help to maintain the genetic diversity within a population because you can select animals that are going to breed together and bring in new mates if necessary. So there we are. So that's in situ and ex situ uh, conservation. Please make sure you're wary of the different examples that are available and what could come up. You definitely need to know advantages and disadvantages of each and they were from the red box, they're taken directly from the mark scheme. Guys, good luck with your exam. Don't forget, don't use the words it, they, amount, or size. And good luck.